About two years ago, I made a video talking about a popular game at the time. YouTubers like Markiplier and PewDiePie were playing the game due to how absurd the concept of the game was. This big brain time. And because of that, the game became popular and gave rise to the topic of today's video. Yandere Simulator. It's a game where you play as a demented high school girl who kills her rivals in love just so Senpai can notice her. A game that back in the day was an early concept and while had a workable build to play around with, was still heavily in development. But that was a few years ago. Surely the game is now... The game is not out yet. It doesn't even have the first rival done at the time of me scripting this. <sighs> so, break out the booze, the sake, and the mouthwash, people. It's time to talk. Oh my god. I am losing my mind. So for those who either don't like weave stuff or clicked on this video for some reason, what is a yandere? Well, aside from basically a crazy bitch, it's a Japanese term for a person initially very loving and gentle to someone before their devotion becomes destructive in nature, often through violence and or brutality. And for some reason, this was a very popular anime character trope and came in a time where the simulator game craze was on YouTube. Yeah, let's take the crazy murderous women and apply that to Goat Simulator. I like break. Seem to have worked. Markiplier and Pewd certainly managed to get this to take off. <laughs> and thus, Yandere Simulator became popular. And boy, oh boy, that's that's really good. This video is not aimed to be hating on Yandere Dev or Yandere Simulator. If anything, I do wish that the game does come out mainly for the fans because they've donated so much time and energy into the game and product that they deserve to have something for all their devotion towards it. That being said, I may not like Yandere Dev, but I certainly don't want people to hate on him on my account. This is a video just simply to explain why I do not appreciate how he's treating his fan base, nor do I think that his game is actually worth investing in at this point. Feel free to disagree with me if you'd like, but realize I'm explaining my reasoning for this, because I believe that it borders even being a scam at this point. I'm a level with you. Not that I like it, but there is a market for it. I'm a huge fan of games like Hitman. <laughs> which is pretty much taking the concept of Hitman and making it into an anime girl theme. I mean, why not? We've got games where we got high school students killing each other. <laughs> games where you become a cannibal. Games where you get boned. So a game like this isn't outside the realm of possibility to make. However, there's a massive problem with the game. Let me be frank here, when it comes to controversies involving gaming programmers, typically I'm on the side of developers depending on the context. If it's something like censorship, or people complaining about how a character is not, I don't know, the right skin tone or something like that. But also mainly because hashtag gamers tend to be entitled little buggers who don't understand what goes into making a video game. If you want an example of that, look no further than the geniuses who complain about the now engraved game Gigantic for being an Overwatch clone. Ignoring all the hard work the developers put in, even when they weren't being paid for said work. That being said, and much like for any sort of stance that one should take in these topics, there are always exceptions and circumstances that will make me bend the knee when siding with a developer. It's not as black and white as people like to make it out to be in these situations. Developers are people, and it'd be stupid for me to think that just because they're a developer that they aren't above criticism. Some can be really cool people, and others can be just outright jerks. And with that out of the way, Yandere Dev is probably one of the worst game developers I have ever seen in my short time on this platform and earth. From coding, to wasting time, to not keeping promises, to exploiting his fans, to exploiting his volunteers, there are issues that range from these all over the place. And I'm pretty sure you've seen pretty much every video concerning Yandere Dev because why the hell would you be watching this video if you weren't just looking for more information about that? And it's not often that I say this, but at this point, I believe the game will probably never be released. It'll probably never be completed outside of a few of the rivals. And while there are essay-length videos out there that go into overwhelming detail about the mess of a game, its mess of a developer and his, well, icky past, 
<sighs> I actually respect your finite time on this blue marble and not want to waste as much time as possible. And if you wanted to learn more about the guy's past, there are several videos talking about it. I personally just want to focus on the gaming aspect and development. As someone who's aspiring to become a game developer himself, I find this case to be a rather sad tale, so let's get right into it. You guys ever see this new menu item from KFC? You know, the chicken with the donut bun? Hot donuts with Kentucky Fried Chicken! And I'm like thinking, oh god, America's fat enough as it is. Are you trying to kill us now, KFC? Which is what I think about when I see Yandere Simulator. It's a game filled with such unnecessary fluff. Yandere Dev? Osana, the first boss out of 10? Fuck that noise. You know what? Hitman mode. How about this? Your hair is blades and you can kill people with that hair. Have that little fucking feature in the game for no fucking reason. Fuck it. Uh, look like Captain Falcon and then you can punch him to death. Uh, fucking look like Saitama from One Punch Man and kill him with one punch. Fuck it. You can play as Sans and have special animations for Sans and have music playing. Oh, wh what about fucking JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? You'll have a certain pose with your character, a stand that can kill him too for no fucking reason right now. We'll put that in the game. Seriously, there are a lot of gameplay features are getting in the way of development of the actual game. And there isn't a problem with implementing these kinds of features in a game as it does flesh it out and makes it more interesting for the player. But that's the thing. Why implement them before you have at least the first rival done? Typically, you want to get the basics of the gameplay down before you start adding more and more features into the game. Otherwise, these features get in the way of the original code and could cause bugs. Let me give you a food reference. Let's say we're baking a cake. But before you put the cake in the oven, you decide to throw it in with all the frosting and toppings on top of the thing. Not only would that cause a mess in the oven, but the toppings and such would only add to the cake mix and make it difficult to salvage. I'll be straight on that, if you're adding more code to the game before establishing the main purpose of said game, you're only going to get more and more issues to deal with before you can actually get to the main portion. This is the Ouroboros of game design. The only difference is it's not placed in places that make me actually want to get excited. It's perfectly fine to want to be able to expand upon your game. That's not the problem. The problem is that these sorts of things should be regulated to the design board and not be implemented into the coding before you have the main game done. And I've already touched on the coding, but gather around, boys and girls. Grandpa Commons gonna tell you the tale of Tiny Build. If you're not familiar, Tiny Build is a developer and publisher of many video games. And a few years ago, Yandere Dead struck a deal with them, even going so far to give the developer an additional programmer to help optimize the game. Sounds pretty good, right? Well... Uh, when the tiny build programmer dove into the code, he noticed that it was pretty much a In simpler terms, it made the game a slog to go through everything for every frame. Now people's laptops didn't just commit harikari, was nothing short of a miracle. But enough of the tangents, despite the mess of the code that the tiny build programmer was dealing with, he took on the task and even managed to rewrite the entire code. And then Yandere Dead kicked him out. According to the dev blog, apparently there were arbitrary changes and such. And there were disagreements on things. Now, you'll have to forgive me, as I'm not fully on board with trusting this, since after this little break in 2018, it's now 2020 and the game still hasn't been released with the first rival yet. Throw in the fact that Yandere Dev decided to make the smart play and basically censor any mention of Tiny Build. Yes, that was a thing. You'll have to forgive me if I don't believe him. Even if it's soon, that still doesn't change the fact that despite you want to save time during this time frame, you streamed game footage for hours on end and took multiple breaks from then and now, Yandere Dev. The problem here is the constant updates to the game in order to keep it interesting, which in and of itself is not really necessary. If you're constantly adding updates to the game without updating the main content, then that just makes more time away from finishing the game. Deleting comments asking about Tiny Build, yeah, that's kind of a trend here. Criticism can be a harsh mistress. Everyone's a critic, but does that mean all criticism is valid? Fuck. So no, certainly not. Not every criticism is valid. Someone telling you to delete your channel more than likely isn't a form of criticism. Neither a straight up insulting a person or saying you can't challenge opinions. Those are vapid criticisms, quote unquote, that really don't add anything to anyone's craft. That being said, when you go out of your way to paint your critics both good and bad as monsters, that's a bit of an issue. But hey, you'd have to be a total dink to actually do that and make a 20 minute video talking about- Oh. Fun little side fact. 
Apparently the script for this video was Lee, and Yandere Dev still went with the ideas here. Thing is, Yandere Dev is willing to paint a narrative in order to defend himself from criticism and hate. He did the same thing when one of the programmers of Skullgirls actually critiqued his first game, Luna Scythe, huh. And basically threw a hissy fit when he didn't get the adulation that he wanted. This is a documented behavior and it's terrible, especially when you consider that by doing this, I believe the best way to demonstrate this was actually with a somewhat quote from the Reddit that I have listed here. Yandere Dev clearly has issues discerning legit criticisms and hate. He tends to compile them both into the same category. He doesn't seem to allow any criticism against him. The differences between him and the celebrities he points out in the video are being smeared in tabloids is that he takes these false truths to heart. These are serious issues that he does need to address. Instead, he waves it away as hate and rather make a 22 minute long video painting himself as the victim in order to garner sympathy and turn his fan base against any criticism aimed towards him valid or not. Now, I've talked about the past, but recently Yandere Dev supposedly did something similar. In his post on Valentine's Day, on the day Osana was supposed to be released to the public, Yandere Dev alludes to more hate that he's received in a prior month. I say supposedly again, since due to his vague wording and language, you don't know exactly what Yandere Dev is referring to. However, I've seen speculation coming about the fact that a video by a smaller YouTuber named Noble managed to reach well over half a million views, and it was talking about Yandere Dev's past. I think it's easy and can be seen that it's putting two to two together that he's probably referring to that. But again, I'm not in Yandere Dev's head, and thank God for that. But it's just something to consider. I'm totally willing to bet that maybe I'm off base on this, but we have to consider all possibilities, and if this is true, then that just paints another picture and how he's trying to paint himself to be a victim in all this. Especially considering how he even used the idea of him quitting in order to drum up a victim complex, if this is true. Is it? I don't know, I'm just speculating at this point. But considering the fact that he also used this as an excuse to delay Osana at this time, yeah, you're gonna have to color me skeptical on this. He's essentially creating himself an echo chamber that acts as his own personal money bank. Now granted, that bank has shrunk significantly, which in all honesty I think is a good thing. Why, you may ask? Patreon, YouTube, Twitch, and who knows what else. Over the years, there was quite a bit of money going into the development of the game. Don't get me wrong, there have been improvements, but five years worth? There was also the time where we took a lot of assets from people without getting credit, but I'm willing to give that a little bit of a leeway since it's kind of past, but at the same time, I don't really see a lot of improvement other than that. At least not with the amount of time that he's been given, and the fact that he's been putting out even more easter eggs, it's kind of, well... What doesn't help is there have been volunteers with the game. Look, I'm sure if you're watching this, you've heard the countless volunteers in the game, some even coming out with horror stories in development. But this is neither here nor there. My point for this segment is that with all the funds of the game, more of it should have gone into professional work for it. So I have to ask, where is the money going to? Is it actually going into the game? And why are you guys supporting it? For those who are actually still doing so, I have to ask this question. Why? I know earlier I've been bringing up Asana, but recently Yandere Dev decided to delay Osana twice. In one of his recent vlogs, the guy delayed the implementation of the first rival because an old animator volunteered appeared and decided to delay Osana again. Osana is 100% functional, and the only reason I haven't released her is because I want to fix bugs, remove exploits, add polish, and improve anything that looks janky. Warning! Warning! Bullshitter alert! So, question. Why not just implement Osana now and then come up with an update for her later down the line? Fixing any bugs and getting feedback on her. Not only would you actually give brand new proof of content to your fans, you'd actually show the gremlins who are criticizing you for not getting Osana in the game. It's just utterly baffling. I know there's a lot of information that's not in this video, but seeing as how there are movie length videos out there who go in detail of the past of this little man, I'm not really interested in going over the past of him again, again, especially since I don't care for the guy. Nor do I actually want to cover things that people have battered into others. 
especially since when you consider that Yandere, dev fans will more than likely hand wave any actual concerns. But if you are a Yandere fan, I do have something I want to ask you. Why do you coddle the man? Seriously, the game has been in development hell for five years despite the fact of so many opportunities to work with other people, programmers, developers, and have so much money funnel into it. Why are you supporting it still after all this time? US fans should not accept these excuses from Yandere Dev. Have some self-respect and either tell them to get to work or pull your support. Your time and money are better spent elsewhere. In actuality, I didn't want to make this video, but funnily enough, one of his former patrons actually confronted me. In actuality, I didn't want to make this video, but one of his former patrons actually came to me talking about this. They asked me to make a video about this, and frankly, I have to roll my eyes at this entire situation. I'm not going to tell you guys to outright drop the guy in his content, but I want you guys to watch and to consider yourselves as fans if your support is being justified here. If you're being respected enough for this, that you're more than just this guy's personal money bank. Just think, that's all I ask. If you want to support a game that has wasted time, money, manpower, volunteer work, passed off the opportunity to actually work with professionals, and a developer is still wasting time? Why would you consider supporting him still? Look, at the end of the day, it's your choice. If you want to support him, more power to you. I haven't given the guy a dime, so it's not my problem. The name's common. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.